Hey everybody, this is Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. Today's question is about Christian meditation. Someone writes, Howdy, Pastor Sullivan. I've never gotten a howdy before. Thanks. Howdy, Pastor Sullivan. I'm 60 going on 61, and I have been Methodist since my teens. My wife and I have recently moved, and we have been church hunting. We stumbled onto, or were led by God, to a very small Lutheran congregation in West Texas. I am very interested. Lutheranism seems to be filling a hole in me that I didn't realize existed. All that aside, I have really enjoyed your videos and have gleaned a lot of information from them. Thank you. My question is, what are your thoughts on Christian meditation or meditating on the scriptures? And maybe some resources and some references. I'm so glad that you found the Lutheran Church, the Lutheran Confession of the Christian Faith, and I'm so glad that its doctrine is nourishing your soul. That, uh, that's always good to hear. As far as meditation goes, you ask a very timely question. Meditation, uh, at least in a pop culture sense, has become cool again recently. Uh, now, meditation, as the world thinks of it, is generally speaking uh, any sort of practice by which you empty your mind of any sort of thoughts uh, with, the ex with the intent of connecting to something deeper than you. Uh, that's not what we're talking about with Christian meditation, obviously. That's Eastern religion meditation. Another one that's uh, in vogue currently right now is called mindfulness meditation. And uh, mindfulness meditation is just that. You uh, sit and observe your thoughts, you don't engage them or interact with them. You just kind of observe them, which thoughts come into your head, etc. Uh, or you observe bodily sensations. The entire point of mindfulness meditation uh, is really to be a casual observer of yourself, almost as if you're outside of your own body, uh, the goal being self-awareness and self-calming. Now, none of this is what we mean when we talk about Christian meditation. Whereas Eastern meditation seeks to empty the mind uh, or simply observe our thoughts, it focuses upon us, Christian meditation isn't about emptying ourselves at all, but rather it's about filling ourselves up, but filling ourselves specifically up with the Word of God then. For the Christian meditation is always and ever rooted in and focused solely upon and drawn back to the Word of God. David speaks about this in Psalm 1. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So it's scripture, not self, that is the object of meditation. He also writes in Psalm 119, verse 48, uh, about the joys of meditating on God's word. He says, My hands also I will lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. So Psalm 1 is a good place to start. Luther uses that. Um, and then Psalm 119, Luther also references that whenever he talks about meditation. We'll get to more of Luther in just a moment. The reason we're saying in just a moment is because first we want to talk about a bad way to do Christian meditation, or a wrong way to do Christian meditation. Uh, any way, or any means of meditation that begins with the Word of God and ends somewhere else. It begins with the Word of God and ends with the self uh, or ends with our emotional experiences. That's a bad way to meditate. Uh, years ago, it's probably been oh over a decade, maybe 12, 13, 15 years ago, um, this thing called Lectio Divina became repopularized. And uh, this is an ancient form of Christian meditation, uh, one that Luther more than likely would have learned in the monastery, but it does just what you're not supposed to do. It uses scripture as a springboard to seek uh, an, an, an ecstatic experience, a union with God that A, isn't promised in scripture, uh, and B, uh, like uses, the, uses the scriptures just simply as a diving board or a ladder to climb to some other goal that ultimately uh, people then leave behind the word and they're focusing instead on this experience. They're seeking that experience. They're not loving the word as God's very words to humanity, as David teaches us in the 119th Psalm. Then, uh, The reason this sort of thing always becomes popular every couple of years is because this is the natural way that people, the sinners especially, read the Holy Scriptures. Uh, we easily tire of the Word. We easily think that we've got it. Yeah, I studied that before. I know it. Meditation, though, isn't about knowing the Word. It's about having God ingrain it into your heart and mind and teaching you therein, then, uh, about His salvation and uh, about the life of faith in this. And so, uh, again, any sort of meditation 
that uses uh, the scripture as a springboard uh, or a ladder to get to something else, uh, whether it's a union of God or an emotional experience, uh, that, again, is not really what we're talking about or what we're seeking with Christian meditation. Now, we mentioned Luther and Psalm 1 and Psalm 119 just a moment ago. So what did Luther write about meditation on the scripture? He actually wrote a lot. The thing is, with one exception, uh, Luther's writings about meditation are scattered all throughout his writings. Uh, and, and there have been uh, some folks that have uh, you know, pieced those together in some papers that are helpful. But I think his most uh, clear words, the most explicit words about meditating upon the scriptures are found in his preface to the Wittenberg edition of his writings. And that is uh, in the English edition in volume 34 of Luther's works, Career of the Reformer, volume 4. So volume 34 in Luther's works. In his preface there, he writes about uh, oratio, meditatio, and tentatio. Uh, these are Latin words. Oratio is Latin for pray. Uh, so we can't by ourselves understand the word or glean anything out of it. And so we pray that God would graciously give us the Holy Spirit to create faith in us, to give us understanding, uh, and to enlighten our hearts with the very word that he's going to work through them. Uh, now then, after that comes meditatio, which is obviously meditate. Uh, this involves a reading of the scripture, but not just reading it silently to yourself. Luther, here and in several other places, uh, talks about the benefits of reading it out loud, of uh, murmuring it to yourself, uh, not just uh, reading it once through, but reading it several times to really let it sink in deep. Now here, you're trying to understand the word uh, and what the Holy Spirit is saying in the words there in the text. Uh, Johann Gerhardt, in one of his sermons, calls the scriptures the workshop of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so this is where he's going to create faith, where he's going to sustain faith, where he's going to strengthen your faith and grant understanding into the text then. As this happens then, after this comes the third, which is tentatio, which is a spiritual affliction or a distress. Uh, Luther writes in that preface, For as soon as God's word takes root and grows in you, the devil will harry you and will make a real doctor of you. And by his assaults will teach you to seek and love God's word. So tentatio is spiritual trial and affliction in which the devil is beating on you with all sorts of different temptations, all of them designed to pull you away from the word that you've been meditating upon day and night. Uh, in these trials, you are not to succumb to the devil's temptation and turn away from the word, but rather you are to go directly back to the word, back to the thing that you've been meditating upon and remain there, because that will be your refuge against the devil's trials and temptations. And the end result of this is that, as Luther says, the devil's assaults then make a real doctor of theology out of you. Uh, they teach you the very thing which he's trying to undo in you. They teach you how to cling to God's word. They teach you that faith. They teach you uh, and ingrain further into your heart what the Lord uh, has been saying in the Holy Scriptures then. So now, this, this is very different from Lectio Divina and from this more, uh, more worldly way of reading the Scriptures. Lectio Divina drives you to an encounter, a direct encounter with God, which is really just your emotions, where tentatio, these assaults of the devil, lead you not to a higher plane in relationship with God, but rather lead you back to the Word and faith in the word and confidence in the word back to the starting place the workshop of the holy spirit so christian meditation begins in prayer um, it is it chews on the word like a cow chews on his cud luther uses that metaphor gerhard uses it the ancients use that metaphor a lot christian meditation then uh, then is what then it doesn't end but it, it brings about these trials so that uh, it drives you back to the word back to faith and back to confidence in that word. Now, as far as uh, resources here, real quick in the last minute, one thing I would read of Luther's is um, in volume, let's see, what is it? Volume 43 of the English edition of Luther's works. Uh, in the American edition, volume 43, you're looking for something called A Simple Way to Pray uh, for Peter the Master Barber. If you're there in a Lutheran church, go ask your Lutheran pastor if you can borrow volume 43 of his works. You're looking for uh, how to pray to Peter Barber. Also then, I cannot re recommend highly enough uh, the Schola Pietatis, the School of Godliness uh, of Johann Gerhard. You can get this at repristinationpress.com. It's five volumes. Currently, volumes one, two, and three are available in English. Cannot recommend this highly enough. And while we're on Gerhard, uh, look for his Sacred Meditations. Uh, these are very brief, uh, but again, 
over the years, I uh, continue to benefit from all three of these works in my personal devotions then. Uh, so thank you very much for your question. If you've got a question about this or any other topic, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com, and we'll get to you as soon as we're able. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on ATP.